Welcome to the Eat for Endurance podcast. My name is Claire Shorenstein, and I'm a board-certified sports dietitian and endurance athlete. I provide virtual nutrition services through my private practice, Eat for Endurance, and I host this podcast because I love sharing the nutrition stories of both professional and recreational athletes, and I also enjoy teaming up with my sports dietitian colleagues to discuss a variety of important nutrition topics. So I have an athlete nutrition profile for you guys today featuring runner and jewelry designer Erica Sarah Reese. Erica is the talent behind Erica Sarah Designs, which is an official partner in jewelry of the New York City Marathon, as well as other New York Roadrunners races. And she produces all kinds of amazing jewelry that is also not related to running. So definitely go check her out. Erica grew up dancing ballet, she dabbled in crew while in college, and eventually she discovered her love of running while going through some major life and career changes, which I can most definitely relate to. She actually completed the same nutrition program at NYU that I did, but then she declined the dietetic internship to pursue her jewelry business. She's had a tough couple of years struggling with burnout, breast cancer, as well as perimenopause, but she's actually finally starting to feel like herself again. We explore how her nutrition and overall self-care routine has evolved, especially in recent years. We talk about surviving, but not in the context of cancer, but more relating to the juggling act that is everyday life with parenthood, running your own small business, preparing food for the family, making all the different food decisions that you typically make for yourself, etc. We also chat about the individual nature of nutrition decisions and how at the end of the day, the most important thing is what feels good to you in your own body. While I asked many of the same questions that I usually ask in these athlete nutrition profiles, we went on quite a few tangents, just giving you guys a heads up. Uh, Some are related to nutrition, some not so much. And we got pretty conversational towards the end on a variety of topics. But I think many of you, and especially my fellow parents out there, will be able to relate to so much that we are both experiencing in our own lives. And I hope you enjoy our discussion. So without further ado, here is my interview with Erica Sarah Reese. Erica, welcome to the Eat for Endurance podcast. I'm so happy you're here and we were able to find some time. We were kind of going back and forth offline about how insane summertime is for working parents, especially who own their own businesses like us. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So uh, how are you doing? How are you surviving? Was it day two? (laughs) It feels like day 1000. How's it going? Day two. We're surviving. We're surviving. I mean, I shouldn't be able to say that because my husband is one of the kids 99% of the time. Um, (laughs) The the day he woke up at five to go for a run. And then like after breakfast, he's cleaning the dishes. He's like, just an FYI, I'm going to be in a really bad mood this entire summer. Every morning I wake up at five because the kids and this will be every morning because the kids. (laughs) It's like, okay, awesome. Thank you. Can't wait. Great summer. So is he, he's the early riser. Is this by choice or the, or you're just like, why is he the one that's getting up at five? Not you. yeah, we both are. No, we both are. Okay, okay. Yeah. Got it, got it. No, we both wake up at like 4.30. Well, I wake up at like 4.35. He wakes up at 5. Um, just, you know, to get it all in. It's like, yes, to get it all in. Especially we decided to keep a kid's home this summer. And um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So we're surviving. It'll be good. Yeah. Really yeah. Good. It will be. So. Well, you did just get back from New York. So you had that little break, yeah. right? So <laughs> that was for the mini 10K, which by the way is a race I absolutely adore. I was in New York City for about 15 years collectively. And I ran that race many times, including when I was pregnant with my, actually did I run it was, maybe it was twice. Well, I know I ran it. It was like basically the last time I ran in my second pregnancy. Because after that, I was like, this just doesn't feel good. <laughs> yeah. It was a really fun run. How did it go for you? Because I know you ran it, right? No, I ended up not running it. Oh, you did? Um, oh, no. no. What happened? I run a million. I run, I run not a million times. I run it many times. And honestly, I didn't know that I'd had a bib going into it. Oh, okay. Uh, then I got a bib. But I, in my mind, I was already like not going to run it. And I was excited about cheering. And then honestly, I was so tired. And I just was like... I'd run, like I was running around New York working and I was like, you know what? I think I just want to relax and watch the race and just like, awesome. Um, it is something I am learning in the, my ripe old, no getting my ripe age, but age of 46, <laughs> like how to, uh, like let go of my ego and uh, just sort of listen to my body and just go with the flow. And it was really nice. I thought I would have some major YOLO and I didn't, which was really weird and concerned me for a minute. Um, but you know, I got up this morning, I went for a run and I was like, okay, I'm still, I'm still like, it's still a part of me. It's still what I want to do. I just don't have to necessarily like run a race to do it, you know? So yeah, 
Yeah. yeah. And so you were there for your jewelry, right? So you kind of had like a booth or what was kind of going on while you yeah. were out there? So I am the uh, exclusive jeweler right, of the New York City Marathon and um, all the New York Roadrunner races. So uh, right now I do the jewelry for the Mini 10K, the Marathon, the Brooklyn Half, and the New York City Half. And so I don't go in for every race, but the Mini 10K, because it's a, you know, a female race, a women's only race, and also um, the history behind it, and I just love it so much. Um, so I do go in every year for that. And um, there isn't an expo, but they have a a bid pickup. I almost said a boob pickup. Mm-hmm. I meant a bid pickup. Um, <laughs> <laughs> boob, bib, whatever. whatever. And so, like, I usually have a little table there, and people get to uh-huh. walk the jewelry and chat and I don't know it's just really cool it's a, it's a really cool way and a fun way to like be a part of the New York community that I miss um yeah the running community yeah. there and just to meet people and it was fun you know so it was really good it was good I was there for like four or five days I think so, oh wow awesome yeah. awesome awesome well we're gonna dig into for sure or get into kind of your time in New York City and and all of that because you lived there for for a little while right how long do you live in New York City um I'm going to do the math, 1999 through whatever 10 years ago was. Um, what was 10 years ago? <laughs> like, Wait, what? Like, what year is it today? Are we in 2024? Okay, got yeah. it. So about 15 years. Yeah, I mean, I got it. grew up in New York, and then I went to, my, my family moved to Florida when I was in high school. And okay. then literally, literally, the day after high school, I um, mean, college, I'm sorry, uh, I went back to New York um for a job and stay there until it was time to leave <laughs> yeah it was time. yeah I think we all kind of have that well okay there will be New Yorkers that just never leave and they're like I will never leave New York and then there there's everywhere else who's like we're like we love New York and we've kind of made it through this season or life and at some point we're like we got to get out of here <laughs> get to it anymore so I have a time and he didn't live in New York anymore I was like perfect yeah. so yeah yeah okay. yeah yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to hit rewind. We're going to dig into your nutrition roots. Um, This is how I always like to start these interviews is just kind of learning a little bit more about the food environment and memories surrounding food and all that. Just a little bit more about you and where it all started. So um, yeah, tell us a little bit about growing up in terms of where you lived and what kinds of memories you have surrounding food and mealtimes. Yeah. So I grew up in New York in Long Island. My Mm -hmm. My accent will pop out every now and then. Um, and man, it was, I grew up, was born in the seventies. So I grew up in the eighties and nineties. It was a interesting time for food. And you do know, I also have a background in nutrition. Yes. Oh, um, we're going to get there. Don't worry. Yeah. So I'm like trying to balance between my brain, like the, what I learned, like the knowledge of like the nutrition industry back then and like my real life. Yeah. But mm-hmm. yeah, I grew up, you know, in a house where my mom was, um, I hate to use the word obsessed, but like very into healthy food, you know, like we only mm-hmm. eat oil on top. Um, you know, I look back now and I'm like, I thought it was healthy food, but like we always had Edmund donuts in our, in our pantry also, you know, um, we yeah. always had all those things that now like, oh, I won't feed my kids. Although I'm learning to chill out a bit. Um, but yeah, I, we just, you know, we started every meal with a salad and we, I, my family is all, um, my grandparents were all Holocaust survivors, Eastern European descent. So food was um, in the house. It was like about nutrition, but amongst family, it was about like celebration and connection. Um, you know, like that scene in The Wedding Singer where Adam Sandler goes and like that old lady gives him a meatball in his his hand. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh my, no, I don't remember. My grandmother actually did that once. Like my grand <laughs> was like. My body yoga like was cooking meatballs and like before I was like here, here here have a meatball I'm like trying to put a meatball in my hand so like that's hilarious yeah um she, her Romanian meatballs were amazing but so food was just always like you know on the one hand it was nutrition on the other hand it was community and um like m- emotional nourishment um and yes. I was also a dancer growing up I did ballet yes. um like twenty hours a week I mean like I was like I danced four or five days a week after school every day. Um, and that was an interesting, you know, uh, we would eat whatever we wanted, <laughs> but food was yeah. a part of that too. We would go out and like, you know, eat fries and, um, every Friday night and, and chicken nuggets. It was weird. But, um, so yeah, these are the weird random memories I have of food growing up, if that makes any sense. Yeah, um, no, for sure. And I mean, yeah, let's explore that. You know, you, 
I think, you know, I heard your interview, of course, on, you know, with Jonathan on For the Long Run, which is a fantastic listen for anyone who hasn't heard it. Um, but there you were talking about how you grew up not really doing sports, but you did do ballet. And it sounds like you were doing that quite a bit. Yeah. Um, and in the ballet community, you know, it's quite common to struggle with food and body image and all of that stuff. And it sounds like you grew, you grew up in this household where, I guess, health, quote, quote, healthy food was, you know, that was a big part of it. But then you have kind of these family cultural, like all these other traditions surrounding foods. So there's a, like a lot of stuff swirling around. Let's just say that. Yeah. Um, I, and I'm I, curious what that was like in, for you, especially kind of being a dancer. You know, I actually, I was talking about this the other day, my mom, I actually really lucked out. Um, for those of you who grew up in Long Island, I went to Martha Meredith Dance Studio. Um, and if you were like, a, like in Long Island, you knew who Martha Meredith was, but Martha, um, and then Norma worked for her and my dad's teacher was Norma. Um, they were not about that at all. They oh, good. were about um, really healthy um, lifestyles. They never pressured us. They but I, like, we literally would go to ballet on Friday nights. I think I'd ballet from four to like eight o'clock at night. We'd have like a little break at eight. We'd go across the street to this like fast food place, get chips, like um, uh, French fries and chicken nuggets, eat it on the dance floor and then get back to dancing. Like they never, ever commented on our bodies. They never commented on anything. We had girls of all sizes. And so we just had a really, I never had an, a negative, negative experience um, with that. I remember like the negativity with body image for me honestly came in. I remember around eighth grade, I was always very slight and very, I hate to use the word skinny, but I was, I was always skinny. And I remember like my eighth grade teacher, Mrs. Nikomoff, like signed my yearbook by, by saying, you know, you're the inspiration behind my diet, which like, how do you say? Yeah. What? Yeah, I'm 45 years old. I remember this day her saying that. And I was like, I'm oh, sorry, what? Um, that is so messed up. Wait, a teacher wrote that? Yeah. Oof. Yeah, it's off. She wore a Victoria's <laughs> I can still smell it now. Um, but I still let her purple. Oh, that, like, like Cosby sweaters. Anyway, but um, she, yeah. And that was honestly like back then the the body image and like food things came in more from like grown-ups who weren't connected to me um mm -hmm. more than they were um you know and there was moments that's, yeah yeah so yeah oh that's yeah. so interesting well thanks for sharing that I mean I know that's not everyone's experience in the dance community so <laughs> I'm really glad that you had a positive one yeah. with that um for sure and yeah I mean <sighs> comments from adults that's just one of these ongoing things that I mean, I'm, I talk with my clients all the time about because we, I mean, everyone experiences it, especially from relatives, older relatives, you know, it's just. Oh, yeah. Well, I like even yeah. I am at my at my kid's school, their elementary school. We started a garden club this year and um, meet another mom. And, you know, we met every Wednesday and we taught the kids who joined the garden club. We had about 20 kids how to grow vegetables and all this stuff. And so one day I said, you know, you guys, why do you think it's so important to eat vegetables? And this one girl who's so sweet in third grade goes, so we don't get fat. And I was like, oh, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> let's not worry about that. That makes me so like, sad. Yeah. So I went to the biochemist. She thought I was crazy. But like, <laughs> she's like, what are you talking did. about? <laughs> but like, this is, I don't know. And I, I do love that now we're living in a world where as women, we're sort of taking that control back. And um, there are those of us who are willing to say like, no, we won't stand up for it. And we're not going to talk this way. Yes. Anymore. And we're not going to talk this way in front of our daughters. And when they hear it from other people, we're going to know how to respond. Um, you know, and we're going to put healthy food on our kids' tables, not so they don't get fat or for body image, but because we want them to be, you know, strong and healthy. So, yeah. And I think it's also, um, I mean, it's just me speaking from my own experience too. Um, it's recognizing that we're just all doing our best with this stuff, mm -hmm. you know? And I mean, I've even had, so, I mean, my younger one's really hard to feed. And mm -hmm. she eats chicken nuggets literally every night. She doesn't eat any vegetables. I mean, I'm a dietitian. It's very triggering for me. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. This I is literally mm -hmm. my best, my very best, uh, even given what I do for a living. And, of course, I'm not a pediatric dietitian, but still. Yeah. Um, my very best is to get her to be just fed is chicken nuggets every night. She eats mm -hmm. some form of chocolate every day. Um, she has fruit and like, they're just like, her lunch is just a variety of crackers and fruit and like maybe some peanut butter, you know, it's, it's like, and so, you know, you get sometimes not comments, but like, 
Like sometimes mm-hmm. I'll get a question. Like I even got a question from a friend and it's, it's totally well-intentioned, but she was asking my opinion on her own kids. And, um, you know, she's, and I was like, it was something having to do with like how much red meat they're eating. I don't know. Anyways, but you know, she's like, oh, the only chicken I, you know, we, they get our chicken nuggets once in a while. And then she had this emoji like, oh, and I'm just like, my kid eats it every night. And there's not, you know, that's the best I can do. So I think it's also, there's so much judgment in this world. I know we're going a little off topic here. Yeah. I always you have, know. I'm, I have a best friend and her son growing up would eat nothing. I mean, this kid, same thing. Like he would eat only crunchy things and she would like try to find crunchy things that he would eat that um had nu- like a nutrient. So like she would buy him yeah. those pea things, like they're green and they have yeah, 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 yeah. And like he would eat that all the time. And you know what? Like he grew out of it. And now he is this, about to go into college and the kid eats everything. And he yeah. survived. And I, I always like right now, you know, I always, my, 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 my actually my husband is at Costco with my kids and they are sending <laughs> probably messages saying, Hey mom, can we buy this? And sending me like pictures of food labels. And you know, <laughs> what has hydrogenated oils and all this stuff. And the thing is I don't as much as I don't want my kids to eat it, you know, we grew up eating that stuff. Like we had ring yeah. in our house and you know, and I never had a I've never had a Twinkie, not gonna lie. But like we grew up eating that stuff once in a while and we survived. And so like you know, it's it's all a part of life. Like we're going to make good decisions. I hate to say good and bad. We're going to make healthy yeah. decisions and some not so healthy for our bodies. And we're going to just keep going anyway. And we'll be fine. You know, like as long as we yeah. eat more healthy than unhealthy. And yeah, it's part of life. Like it's part of living. So I think yeah. there's so much judgment and there's so much uh, out there, especially, you know, in, in the running and in the where I remember at one point, um, it was around, I'm 46, it was around four years ago, maybe. And I was, you know, starting to get into this whole like fasted, like, you know, intermittent fasting. And I remember like I posted this thing about like running fast in the morning. And for me, that's how, what I, my body needed at the time because I had digestive issues. And then someone wrote me back and they said, they, they were like, oh, you shouldn't do that. Like I got all these different opinions from people about whether I should be run, you know, running fasted or not. And I want to be like, you guys, none of you are in my body. Like, you don't know why I'm physically running fasted. You don't know how much I eat after. Cause like I would literally eat, you know, plenty of calories after. Um, and anyway, I'm going off topic, but I just feel like, <laughs> yes, no, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> there's so much judgment. There's so much information out there. There's this and there's that there's keto, there's fasting, there's a thousand different things. And it's just like, everyone just chill out and just like, just eat. Like literally, I saw you know, for those say, I I'm eating pretzels as we're <laughs> I'm trying to eat my pretzels. They're sitting in my lap and they're not gluten. Um yeah. they're made with white flour. <gasps> white that. flour is fine. I, yeah. I mean there's there's a lot. We'll we'll, we'll get back on topic in a sec. I'll All say right. one last thing. No, no, we're, this is good. I love tangents. Um I mean the one last thing I'll say is is, you know, like like when I'm working with clients, like, and I'm giving feedback on a food journal, of course, like, and I literally just did this before we hopped on a call, like, you know, I'm pointing out like, oh, this is missing a protein or we didn't have enough carbs here. Like we're trying to have mostly balanced meals and like this food luck I just reviewed, like we were going through all this stuff. And then you just like, one of the things was pizza with friends. And part of it was like, not every meal has to be like, I literally wrote, not every meal has to be perfectly balanced. First of all, like, what does that even mean? Um, But not every meal has to be balanced. If you happen to enjoy your pizza with some sort of pro- like additional protein on it. Cause we're, we are trying to get him to eat a little bit more protein. Like great. Yeah. Um, if you enjoy your pizza with some vegetables or you want a side salad, great. And also if all you have is some cheese pizza, you will be fine. Yeah. You know, like, this is not, like this is one meal in the midst of all these things, you know, that- just make sure you're, you eat, make sure you've, you know, you're not hungry. Um, and it's fine. So, uh, yeah. There's there's so much of this we could go on forever, but yeah. we'll park it there. We're gonna get back to your story. All right. So, uh, <laughs> and um, so I know that you did crew in college, uh, which I you you had mentioned was a mistake, and I was just curious. I don't know how long that lasted, but anything kind of in your time in college that stands out from kind of your whole nutrition journey and and how you viewed nutrition, how you fed yourself, or thought about food. You know, um, again, it's so interesting that I've been thinking about that a lot lately because, you know, we survived, right? I remember going mm-hmm. to college and just like even growing up in this house where I had so much education about nutrition, um, mm-hmm. I just ate whatever I wanted. And I gained, you know, like people gained the freshman 15. I gained the freshman like 50. Like I would go to crew practice. I was the world's worst crewer. Like I, I mean, the fact that they let me stay on this team, I don't know why. 
I was, I was terrible. Um, I lasted. Wait, you were rowing? Were you? So you were, oh, you were, okay. I didn't know if you were a coxswain because you said you were like very lightweight. Okay. Okay. Well, and that was the problem. So (laughs) if you guys have ever crewed before, when you catch a crab, it means like the water sort of catches your, um, your paddle and pulls you back. I literally was so lightweight that like I would catch a crab and it would like, fling me backwards and I would hit my head on other people's paddles or oars, whatever they're called. So yeah, yeah. go down with a lingo. Um, but yeah, I mean, I didn't pay attention to nutrition at all in college until I gained a significant amount of weight. And then I remember like at one point I came home um, and this again was like an, a grown up saying something. And so for crew, we had to, we started each practice, like either they divide us in half and half of us would do like a workout and half of us mm-hmm. would crew, and then we would swap. And so the workout with things like squats and lunges and all these things, and you have to run three miles, is actually how I started running. Um, and I was getting bulky, you know, between eating um, an entire pizza by myself every night. And then also working out, like, you know, doing squats and lunches and all those things. My legs were getting really bulky. And I remember coming home and someone in my family, not my immediate family, but someone in my family said to me, um, you know, your legs are getting really big. You need to watch out for that. And (laughs) And now it's still to me this day, like, that is my biggest, like, that is the spot when I look in the mirror, I look at my legs, see how big they look. Um, when I look at me and races, I look to see how big my le- my legs look in my running pictures always. Like that's my, that's my Achilles heel right there. My legs, you know, are they too thick? Mm. Um, mm. And so, you know, I can't necessarily say that I stopped eating a pizza every night because it was cheap and good. Um, and I went to a party school, so there was plenty of pizza here every night. But, um, yeah. you know, again, I survived. Yeah. You know? I survived. Did that, did that change how you, so that didn't seem to change much for you. It was more like kind of how you viewed yourself or did you start to change your nutrition habits at all? Um, you know, I didn't start to change my nutrition habits at all until I want to say 2003, I was going through major, major stomach issues. I just never felt well. Um, I won't go into details, but I spent a lot of time in the bathroom and a lot of time lying on the bathroom floor. Um, I was getting migraines nonstop, sinus infections. I just, I never felt well. And mm. then that they started actually um, testing me to see if I had celiac. Um, and we thought that I did. And so I went gluten-free for a really long time. And then I was seen by a doctor um, who specialized in celiac and we did all the tests. And he said I didn't have it. But the fact that I'd been on a gluten-free diet for so long meant that I could have had, you know, who knows. Um, but that is really actually what led me to start looking at what I was eating in general. So it wasn't really until my mid-20s that I paid any attention to what I was putting in my body. Um, mm. You know, What do you think brought on kind of all the stomach issues? Like, were you super stressed? Was it kind of I something say- else going on? I don't, I honestly don't know. I mean, I think that, you know, I do notice like my body changes every few years, you know, and I don't know if it's just like a cycle of my body. And, um, I wasn't necessarily more stressed than usual. Um, Mm. I just, yeah, I just stopped being able to tolerate, which is funny because now I can tolerate again. Like, Mm. um, and, and I don't know when that changed. I just know that as my kids pizza, I'll have a slice of pizza too. And I'm like, and I don't, like, I'm not in pain the next day. And, like, I can have a, you know, last night I had totally me for dinner. And, like, I'm not in pain. So mm. I don't know. I, I do wonder if it was hormonal um, now that I'm in my late 40s and I'm learning. By the way, women, if you're watching this and you're, like, 30s, 20s, learning about your hormones now. Like, I don't know why no one told me that. Um, but I'm learning a lot more about how my hormones, ov- like, overall affect my body. And mm-hmm. I wonder what maybe was going on with me then, hormonally speaking, that could have been impacting my digestion and, and whatnot. So who knows? There's, I mean, and there are a lot of things. I mean, simply not eating enough relative to how much you exercise, that's a huge cause yeah. of GI distress. And I mean, yeah. there's stress. I mean, there are just so many things that can cause problems. You know, maybe it's some sort of gut microbiome issue. <laughs> Um, there is some hormonal connection. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's <definitely. laughs> a lot of stuff. Yeah. It's very complicated. That's why exactly. I think almost all my clients end up having some sort of GI issue they're working on with me. Um, <laughs> but so, I mean, you did, it was funny, you know, you mentioned that you went, you, you started the, the nutrition program at NYU, which is where I did my program, um, a little bit later. 
And so you were kind of on the path to becoming a dietitian, getting your master's, and it ended up not being for you, which is great because now you're off doing what you love, creating jewelry, which is awesome. Right. I'm yeah. so... So, I mean, I was going to ask what led to the decision to go into the program. Was it kind of exploring your own body and some of these issues and kind of discovering nutrition or, um, yeah, kind of, so what kind of caused you to decide to enter it? And also what, you know, how did you leave it? Like, how did that go? I mean, I know it was to start your business, but maybe you can just talk us through it a little bit. Yeah, it was a midlife crisis at 30. Um, not even ah. kidding. <laughs> I was, so I was living a completely different life back then. I was with a different partner. I was working in corporate fashion um, and I was miserable. I came home crying every day. From the outside, it looked like I had the perfect life. Um, and, you know, and I was depressed and anxious as hell. I came, like I said, came home crying from work every day. Um, and so I remember uh, the person I was with at the time, um, we were about to break up anyway, but I remember him saying to me, like, if you could do anything else, what would you do? And I was so interested in nutrition at the time. I love food. I love cooking. I love the colors. I, I just, I love food and fabric. It's weird, but like those two things make me really happy. Um, and I remember thinking like, well, huh, I don't know. Maybe I should be a nutrition. Like it literally just came out of the blue. Um, I just was so interested in how food was impacting my body. and. I love learning things like part of what I love about jewelry is actually the science behind it, like why metals melt at what temperatures. And part of why I love the science of nutrition is like learning about, I mean, our bodies are insanely miraculous and just learning, you know, how different foods and nutrients and micro and macros and all the whatever vitamins and minerals, like the, like the pathways of our body and just what it does to us, um, what, you know, how it can help us or hurt us. And, um, anyway, so I just, I, I applied to NYU. I mean, the application deadline was the next day. Not oh even kidding. <laughs> not even kidding. I went home from this insanely intense corporate job, went home, spent all night writing essays and filling out applications. The person I was with, like we, we actually knew we were getting a divorce, right? Like I, I promised my husband I would talk about my, my former marriage. But anyway, like we knew we weren't going to be together. He still like went to NYU the next morning and dropped it off for me. So like it would get in on time. And mm. um, and then um, about, I guess, two or three weeks later, I got an acceptance letter. And the next day, I walked into my job and quit and wow. went back to school. Um, was Lisa still there or at that time? Lisa. Lisa Sasson? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, She's been there forever. Yeah. Did you, you know Andy? Bel was it Andy Bellotti? Was it? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Andy was in a lot yep. of my classes. Um, mm -hmm. There were some great That's people. so funny. Yeah. I feel like it's so funny. We have so many, I mean, obviously we have very different paths, but like there's so many similarities. I also had like, well, I had like multiple, I had like a quarter life crisis where I just traveled. I had, had my like mid-ish life crisis where I also turned 30, went back. I went to NYU. I'm, I'm 42, so I'm a little younger. Um, and then I ended up just staying the course and doing that. But um, I also was working kind of a corporate-ish, corporate type job, but in the legal uh, field and miserable and depressed and yeah um and I know that like part of your running was recovering from that it sounded like you know just kind of which I mean again I can completely relate to because the two times where I st started running once in high school and then again really serious or more seriously in my 20s were after like bad breaks <laughs> <It's just> like <laughs> and like just like total life confusion <laughs> So, I mean, it really does kind of give you this sense of like purpose and um, self-confidence. And I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Absolutely. No, absolutely. I, I started running to, to believe I could get through what I was going through. Mm -hmm. I just, like, well, if I could do that, then I can do this. And I'm just like, okay, yep. I'm going to train for a marathon. I've never, well, I've never run more than three miles. I'm going to train for a marathon. And if I can do that, I can do anything. And, you know, so yeah. that's how it, it all came about. Um, yeah. Yeah. Loved, I loved school. I loved NYU. I loved nutrition. I loved um, or get, no, uh, biochem was my absolute favorite class. What was his te the teacher's name? Oh my gosh, he was awesome. He had a very thick accent. Can't remember any name. Anyway, he was amazing. Um, and yeah, and then you know we did that. It came time to apply for internships, and I applied. And I remember being in Florida in my parents' house during Passover, 
and being really nervous and opening up my internship and seeing that I got my first choice, NYU. Ah, that's right in mine. Yeah. And saying, oh my gosh, I don't want this. <laughs> well, that honestly was, that's basically how I also felt. <laughs> I had to do it if I wanted to be a dietitian. It was horrible. <laughs> I mean, it's not that I did I just, I, so honestly, a big part of it, like by then I had started my business. Okay. And- I loved my business, but also I've always been really anxious, not about food, but about money. <laughs> um, yeah. I like, I was still working. Um, even though I quit my job at my old fashion business, they asked me to come mm-hmm. back and consult. So I was still consulting part time and mm-hmm. a single woman living in New York city. Like I had, you know, an apartment that was, don't even ask how many thousand dollars a month. Like I needed mm-hmm. to pay bills. I had medical insurance. You know, I was, I was in my mid thirties at that point. Like, and if you were going to do your internship, you couldn't, you were not allowed to have a job. Yeah, I know. Like, I can't, I can't. I, and you have I, to pay for it. You yeah. have to pay to work full time. Yeah, I had been working. In, I mean, I worked in high school. I worked my way full time yeah. college. Like, I had a job all through college. I paid for everything. Like, for me, all of a sudden, in the age of 30, you know, 3, 35, whatever I was, to not work and go to school all day, like, that was not something I could handle. Yeah. And in my business and I was like well I guess I could just give this a shot and hope it works out <laughs> so I did and so I hit decline then I called NYU and I said my friend didn't get into any program can she have my spot and, I said, sure. and they gave her my spot oh it's amazing <laughs> oh my gosh doesn't go like that anymore <laughs> no it doesn't I let her have it. it was amazing um and that was uh, it yeah wow wow and but. then, and then your business obviously has just taken off and, and you've been doing jewelry for a really long time yeah. like since you were young, right? Well, I mean, so I started, I've always been a designer. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I always find things like I loved making jewelry and I mean, in the eighties, I made jewelry out of leather and feathers and rhinestones. Mm-hmm. Really, mm-hmm. really sexy. Um, <laughs> Love it. Um, but yeah, I've always made things. I've always made jewelry or clothing or, or something. Um, you know, that's yeah. just always my thing. I've always wanted to, wanted to. It's funny how it all happened because going into college, I actually wanted to go to FIT. I wanted to be a fashion designer. And oh. my dad was like, no, like you're not going to go into a school that focuses on one thing. You need to go get a business degree. And then you can decide what you want to do with it. And mm. so at the end of the day, I've still ended up in some sort, it's not fashion, but like I ended yeah. up some, in, a, in a design role, you know? Um, but I do think that if I hadn't had my business background, I wouldn't, you know, be where I am. Excuse me. Cause I wouldn't understand all the, you know, the behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Business thing. So yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. And so then here I am running yeah. some jewelry and well, raising fun kids. Fact. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Well, fun fact, I I love making jewelry and loved. I mean, I just love doing things with my hands and yeah. I, I was a musician and like would make my own reads. So I feel I've always done things like I think I was meant to be like probably in a, in the health field. I probably should have been a surgeon or something. And my parents are doctors and I'm like very good with like little things anyways. Um, but no, I grew up doing jewelry. And oh, yeah. but what I but, but my thing that I would do is I would go to antique stores and get like like old, crazy, like crystal necklaces and just take them apart and do fun things with them and um I love I mean I love I love jewelry and I have still this like giant caboodle giant it's actually downstairs and I, and I, oh yeah with all of I mean I was like obsessed with just all kinds of beads and I don't know it was so much fun I just remember there was like a little store in my town called beat it and you'd you'd like go in and like you'd spend like 80 dollars and come out with a bag like this big and then my mom was like what the actual fuck is that? Yeah, I'm not supporting this habit anymore. That's why you still have right? I mean, I have bought what? things and I'm like, my daughter will use it one day. It's like, I need a few arts and crafts with the herb because I don't want to get rid of it. I spent so much money on all of it back in the day. Oh, yeah. And I now- mean, it's like hun- hundreds and hundreds of dollars in this caboodle of stuff. But I actually did. I have whipped it out and like we've done bead making all together and it's been really fun. We don't do it all the time. But my newest thing is sea glass. I collect sea glass. And like, oh. if I actually learned how to drill... And do all this stuff. I feel like it would just there because some of the sea glass is gorgeous, and you can make mm-hmm. such cool jewelry with that. But anywho, just a little tidbit about me. I also have a connection to jewelry. It's so fun. Um, but okay, we have like digressed so much from nutrition, but that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, 
Okay. Today's show is brought to you by my company, Eat for Endurance. If you've been a listener for a while, I'm sure you've heard about my self-paced course, Peak Performance for Endurance Athletes. And today I wanted to assess interest to see if any of you would be interested in taking this as a hybrid course. So that means that you would get access to the self-paced course. It would be slowly released over the course of say eight weeks or so. Um, and then we would also have four live hour long Q and A sessions with me. It would be a very small group. Um, probably like five to 10 people max, maybe slightly more. But the idea is that I'm trying to keep it really small so that I can work really closely with everyone. And I I'm still trying to keep the price really low. So the program by itself, the, I mean, the course by itself is $450 and I would make it probably only just like $650. So that's only $50 per hour long Q&A with me, um, again, getting closed access. My whole goal here is to make it more affordable to have close access to me and to receive individualized support because I know that not everyone does well with self-paced programs and really wants a little bit more than that. Um, and if you already bought the course and you're interested in this, you can absolutely just pay the difference and join in. Um, I probably would offer this later in July, maybe early August. Again, I'm just assessing interest right now and then we can see when everyone's available and kind of work out all the details. I would need at least five people to make it happen. And if I don't have enough interest now, totally cool. I will look into doing this again early next year as I know I'm leaving this a little last minute for some of the fall races that are happening. So let me know if you're interested. You can DM me on Instagram. You can also email me claire at eatforendurance.com and just say, hey, I'm interested. Um, and if you want to give me some more background info, that's great too. If you would rather work very, very closely with me over a more prolonged period of time, um, then my monthly programs are definitely a great thing to do if that's in your budget. Um, I offer both two month and three month options for my one to one nutrition coaching, and I do have openings starting in early July. So if you want to do that, you can fill out a new client inquiry. Um, you can also schedule a free 10 minute call. Um, you can do all of that on my website services page if you're interested. All right, let's get back to our show. Okay, we're going to take a total turn to something different now. Um, I saw in one of your Instagram posts that over the last two years, you've been really struggling with a number of things. Um, you know, burnout, breast cancer, and perimenopause were the things you listed. And um, like you know, many professionals. Oh my, burnout, <laughs> breast cancer, and perimenopause. So I know, right? <laughs> Um, and I, and you were saying how many professionals have told you not to run until your breast surgeon recognized how important running is to you and kind of gave you the green light. And from the looks of it, at least, I mean, obviously you can tell us if this is not the case, but it, it seems like you're feeling great now, which obviously <laughs> is really wonderful. Um, I'm sure there have been all kinds of, you know, symptoms and procedures and nutrition changes and all kinds of other things coming up while you've been dealing with these challenges and I'd love for you just to share, you know, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Maybe we can just share your experiences with burnout because I know that's something that so many busy recreational athletes uh, can relate to as we juggle a million things and we're trying to train. And, and so maybe you can start there and we can kind of just see where it leads us. Yeah. I mean, my gosh, where do I start? Um, I'm trying to remember back because, you know, and um, my kids, just a heads up, my kids just walked in the house. So ah. I call it BC. Because they don't know about the C A N C E R. <gasps> Got it. They they're downstairs, but still. Got so, it. Okay. So that's my co word is B C. Um, okay. Got it. They don't know. They're you know. They, mm -hmm. a, they don't need to worry about anything. Um, totally. Little. But um, yeah, it was sort of crazy, and I don't even know when it all started. But there was, it, there was a point um, where I just stopped feeling like myself. Um, I was just, I don't, I, I just, I started having these episodes where like, I would just lose my mind. I would get really, really angry. I would get really, really depressed. I would go, I would, like my kids were afraid of me every now and then. I would just completely lose my shit on them. Um, sorry, I'm not to curse. I apologize. You're fine. You're good. Um, You're good. Like, or I would go sit in my car and cry at night. Like I just couldn't control it. And my husband mm -hmm. started paying attention to it and he started tracking it and he's like okay it's happening during your cycle at this point of your cycle mm. so like so it it's hormonal and you need to go speak to your doctor like he's the one that identified this um and mm -hmm. i was so 40 it was about when i was like 42 43 um and so i went to my OBGYN and she tested my hormones and she's like yeah like you know this is probably the beginning of perimenopause and you have no progesterone and you have no testosterone and i started learning so much 
about my hormones. Um, and oh my gosh, I feel like I give an entire lesson about them. Um, mm -hmm. I do want to say to any women out there, like if you're going through anything like perimenopause on average starts about 10 to 15 years before you hit menopause. And so if you start feeling different, you start feeling angry or anxious or tired, you're not sleeping, like go to your doctor because there's a reason for it. Like, don't just accept it. Um, but it definitely led to my burnout. Um, there was a point where we actually thought that I had a brain tumor. Um, they gave me an mm. MRI and they didn't know what was going on because I would just start blacking out. Like I remember mm. driving one day with my husband in the car, thank God. And he was like, you just went through a red light. What did you just do? And I didn't, I'm not kidding. I didn't see it. Like I was looking oh, at wow. I didn't see it. Um, I just would stop. I, I couldn't remember anything. It was like, it wasn't just brain fog. I just felt like. I can't even, I, I don't even know how to explain it. Um, mm. And so after all these tests and whatnot, besides my hormones, um, my doctor's like, you know, what's going on is that you are so burned out that your body is just, it's like, it's had enough. Like it's sort of shutting down, like mm. everything was shutting down and it was pretty awful. Um, and so I started realizing like I had to take better care of myself. And then that led to me finally, you know, my doctor's like, ah, you know, by the way, you're past due for your mammogram. Let's get that on the calendar. And she made my appointment for me because I still wasn't doing it because I was overwhelmed. And then, you know, that came back with BC. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. And so um, it's just been, a, it's been a crazy, crazy few years. Um, and I've learned a lot. And I, you know, I am now, I, I my OBGYN that I used to work with has since stopped working. Um, and I tried a few other ones and, you know, I went to the, the cancer clinic risk thing. And, you know, I had this one woman tell me that you cannot do this and you could not do that. And you could not go on HRT and you get all these things. And I was just like, you know, and then my, my, my surgeon, we were talking about what I was feeling and she's like, well, you really have to look at your quality of life. Like, you know, we want obviously to prevent it from coming back, but at the same time, like, what's the point in living if you feel like crap every day? Like what's, you know, what's the point if you just feel awful every day? Um, yeah. I was still so tired. Like I, I couldn't get past 10 o'clock in the morning without taking a nap every day. Like I just, I just couldn't function. Um, and so, um, after a while I actually found someone local that I'm now working with and she didn't just do blood work, but she actually did saliva testing. Um, and we found out that my cortisol levels were insanely high. Um, and my progesterone was like gone and, you know, my old doctor was giving me synthetic and she put me on bioidentical anyway. And now through working with her, I just, yeah, I, I mean, I've learned like, you know, we put me on progesterone. We're still working some details out. Everything's not quite where I want it to be, but I've also learned to just like, like, you know, we were talking before about how I didn't run them in in 10 K. Like I knew that I was tired and I knew that if I did that race, even if I felt like crap in the middle of the race, I would be like, no, I have three more miles. I can push you three more miles. And I would drive my body to the point where it didn't feel good. And hmm. I, you know, I would raise my cortisol levels again. And why? Like I'm doing all this work to try to feel better. And I don't want to feel like crap anymore. Like even, you know, I've stopped wearing a watch to run. Um, I don't mm -hmm. wear a watch anymore. I just go by feeling. And if I am in the middle of a run and I'm not home yet and it's, I start feeling my body get tired, I stop and I walk home. You know, like, um, I'm not, I'm not training to win races. I'm just at this point, like training to win my life back kind of thing. Um, mm. and then, you know, the same thing with what I put in my body now, like I know I'm sitting here eating pretzels, but I've mostly, you know, I, I have cut out alcohol, um, which was a big deal for me. Uh, not that I, I was never a big drinker, but definitely during the pandemic, my husband and I would open a bottle of wine every night, you know, mm -hmm. and then I do enjoy like a really good beer in the backyard. I do enjoy like a glass of wine at five o'clock when I'm cooking dinner. Um, but I've stopped drinking and I don't miss it. Um, I have seltzer instead, you know? Um, so, you know, and, and another thing, like it's what we were talking about before um, about like back when you, I did eat, you know, how, about how we eat and we're going to be fine, right? Like if you eat a piece of meat, yeah. you're going to be fine. If you eat a bag of whatever, you're going to be fine. But at the same yeah. time, I think like as I've gone through all this, I've actually learned to listen to my body. And so when I was in New York recently and I wasn't, you know, I didn't have a full pantry at, of what I want, like to eat at disposal. I didn't have a refrigerator full of fruits and vegetables at disposal. At my disposal, disposal, <laughs> I, you know, went out for lunch one day and had pizza and chicken nuggets. And then I had a bag of M&Ms. And that night in my hotel room, I woke up 
um, with a hot flash and I don't really get hot flashes and, hmm. um, and just, uh, and then I was listening to this in a podcast say about, about glucose and like, it was talking about like when you have, when, if you wake up in the middle of the night and have these hot flashes, like your, is your blood sugar plummeting and things like that. And so like, I'm learning a lot more about like, I can eat whatever I want if I really want to, but when I do, how does my body feel? And then I'm learning to listen mm. to it. Just the same yeah. thing with running. Um, when this all actually, with running, when it all started happening, I remember I would do these runs and it used to be like that running would give me endorphins and now running would make me feel like I wasn't going to cry. Like I would, I would have this intense feeling of need to sit down in the middle of the street and just cry. Or like I would get off my Peloton and feel like I wanted to cry, not feel good. And I was like, okay, that's when you know something is wrong. Like that you know that like this this stress that you're putting on your body is producing the wrong kind of hormones, the wrong chemical, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it's just been, it's just really interesting. Like, you know, this part of my life, having gone through all this, like where I went to school to learn all about food and what it is for my body. And now I'm going through this new part of life and I'm learning all about what food and exercise are doing for my body in different ways. Um, yeah. And it's interesting. I, I hear some, like, some, how do I say this? I hear, like, it's just like going back to what I was talking about before about, like, when I would do the intermittent fasting, I get, like, this person saying, you know, you see this nutrition is going, oh, intermittent fasting is bad, or this is bad, or this is bad, or whatever it was. And now I hear people say it, and I'm like, well, who's it bad? And I'm not saying it's good or bad. I have no idea. Now I don't do it because I do realize it's put more stress on my body. Back then it was good, and now it's not. Like, I mm -hmm. can tell the difference by listening to my body. But yeah. I think that, like, there's a lot of this generalization about what's good and bad for people without really taking people at where they are in their journey. And mm -hmm. people sort of need to learn how to listen to themselves and their own bodies and, and not, you, you know, like – not just see all the social media and just take it all as fact. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you know, it's, it's tricky with that stuff um, because, well, first of all, thanks for sharing all that. <laughs> um, and we'll kind of explore that a little further, but with, with what you were saying is tricky because, you know, we have, we have the research, right. And you, you went through nutrition school long enough to know that, you know, dietitians in terms of like what we're, you know, trained to look at is what we know based on science. And we also know that, you know, nutrition is a relatively young science. We don't know everything, right? And studies, there are some studies that are strong and some that are not. And we always, every single study out there always says we need more research. That literally is what every single study will say, right? So we always need more research. So, you know, we look at, I think when people, I mean, I obviously can't speak to everyone who's commenting on your stuff, but I mean, I know I, I made a comment on, it was, okay, this Hoka, I remember Hoka recently posted something on socials where they were like, do you, you know, do you run faster or not? And it was basically like, okay, a shoe company, like talking about some sort of nutrition thing, but it was like in a way that was almost kind of supported fasted running. And, oh, I and I, yeah. And I got a little frustrated with that because number one, it's a shoe company. Number two, which I mean, doesn't mean like, obviously like I can talk about shoes. It's not yeah. my, like, fine, whatever. But it was like, in a way that's kind of promoting fasted running when we do have research to support that it's not beneficial. Um, that to me was just like, why are you doing that? But, mm -hmm. but I will say along the lines of what you're saying is there will always be people who are outliers always, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we yeah. know this with low carb keto stuff. I mean, there are people out there who are, Granted, I don't always love the way they're they're preaching low carb carnivore keto whatever. Yeah. Um, but there are some athletes who are at least for now thriving on that style of eating. Yeah. Is that something that I recommend based on research and experience? Yeah. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. But I'm also not gonna tell you specifically like you can't do that to your body. Now, what I will probably say is, hey, can you stop trying to like convert everybody to carnivore? <laughs> Like that's, right. you're not, first of all, you're not a dietitian and second, like why, but, um, yeah. but yes, I, I understand it's, it's one of these tricky things where we are asking people not to comment, but we're also in this world where we are putting ourselves out there, telling yeah. everyone what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And then, it, you know, then it's like, and then every, and then the whole blurry line of the nutrition world where uh, like everyone thinks they're an expert, you know? So it, it's, it's, it's just this wild place.
no. we live in. Yeah, I mean, I will, I will be very honest. I will say why I was doing it at that point. I was doing it because I wanted to lose weight. Like I mm-hmm. had lose weight, and I had, I had. It was the beginning of my perimenopause journey, but I didn't know that I was doing like that's what was going on. And I had listened to something talking about fasting, doing a sixteen eight fast, and I signed up for this thing. And I, you know, and I wanted to, I wanted to do it. And you know, who knows? Like looking back now, maybe that's why I started my burn. Who knows? I have no idea. Um, I also yeah. tend to have some stomach issues in the morning. So if I was getting a run mm-hmm. that morning, it really, like, if there's no bathroom on, on my trail, I really do want to not have more food in my belly, let's be honest. But, um, mm-hmm. but you know, it was because of that. And then when I realized, like, I realized that my runs were suffering because I felt like crap midway through them and I'd get really hungry. Then I was like, okay, maybe this isn't working for me, you know? And yeah. so I stopped doing it. And now I yeah. – eat plenty yeah. before my run this morning I had chocolate chip pancakes which were delicious um <laughs> yes but, yes yes so no, um and but yeah. yeah yeah and and these things are you know there are a lot of reasons that could have led to kind of the burnout and as I said you know, sometimes you, you know, you're unintentionally under, I mean, I definitely at various points of my life have not been eating enough and it's caused a whole crazy set of issues. And sometimes it was intentional. Sometimes it wasn't, you know? So, yeah. um, I think there are a lot of people who don't necessarily know that they're not eating enough, especially if they are exercising a lot. And then you add the layer of trying to lose weight on top of that. And then you're busy, you're stressed out, you have a family, you're doing your business. I mean, all these different things, like absolutely that could lead to GI distress, that could lead to hormonal issues. I mean, do we know that's what happened? Of course not. But like yeah. there, are, there are some common themes that we see, but, um, but yeah. So yeah, we're actually, first I'm going to tell you to move your video up. <laughs> there you go. There's your face. Okay. Okay. Can I see you? If you are if you're watching this, if you're watching this, you may have seen Erica's mouth moving a lot and not because she's on her phone. She's totally fine. I wouldn't it work. I'm sorry. Wait, can you No, see? no, you're totally good. You're totally good. I didn't want to interrupt you before when you were talking about stuff. Oh no. But no. No, you're good. You're totally fine. <laughs> I think it's because the phone is vertical, but this thing is like so you can't you can't see where I see. So no, you're totally fine. Um anywho. Yeah. So, I mean, where are you at now? I mean, obviously if you're not comfortable talking about BC, oh, we don't have to. I, I, um, I am. Okay. I am. Don't belong, believe in TMI. Um, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm BC free. Um, nice. Yeah. So there's that. I am running when I feel like it. I am not running when I don't feel like it. Um, sometimes I jump on the Peloton, sometimes I don't, I am trying to strength train more. I'm trying to do more weights, even though that person told me I had bulky legs back in the day, I'm trying to do more lunges and squats, um, and prevent my sarcopenia. Um, <laughs> mm, all day yeah. just move on. um, yeah. I, yeah, I feel good. Like, excuse me. Like I, I, you know, there are days where I know that if, um, I'm feeling like crap or like I'm feeling down. I know that there's a reason behind it. And I say to myself, okay, I'm having a moment and you know, this is what I need to do. Um, you know, are you still being treated? Um, yeah, I mean, I still, I'm working with my specialist on my hormones and then I have to get a mammogram every six months. Um, okay. And then I'm probably actually due for one now, but. And any meds or anything or no? I said, I didn't want them. They wanted to put me on, um, what's that one to max whatever it is Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah okay i said no here's the thing like i um i don't have the BRCA you know gene or anything like that we don't know why i got it um Mm. do a mammogram every six months we might do the um the what's the one that's more advanced by the way this is my brain fog taking in every now and then where i can (laughs) like not the ultrasound thank you the ultrasound one and and, you know, I'd like to think that we'll catch it. If it comes back, we'll catch it early and then we can take it from there. But as of right now, I feel like I have no reason to believe it will come back. And I don't know if that's being naive and it probably is, mm. uh, but I don't, I, I don't want to feel like crap every day. Um, I want to feel good. And I, you know, I do look at the risk of like you know the drugs that they want to put you on they send you into early menopause and there's a mm. much risk of heart disease for men and, and all these other things and I just 
I'm not ready to subject myself to that. Um, and I'm, this is not a judgment. Oh my gosh. And there might be people out there that are taking it that are feeling judged or that are feeling like, I don't know what I'm talking about or anything. And my gosh, please don't feel that way. Like you guys don't know what my family history is with heart disease and whatnot. And so they're like a big factor in that for me. Mm, um, yeah. And that runs significant in my family. So I have to be very much aware of that. Um, yeah. On both sides of my family. So I just wasn't ready to do that for myself right now, um, after speaking to my team, um, and like my results and, and, you know, we'll see what happens. The other thing was my, um, my, uh, I guess call it tumor. My cancer was, was big. Um, it was really big, but it hadn't spread. So like that Mm -hmm. also somehow gives me hope that like, I don't know. And I could be wrong. Like I'm not a doctor. I'm really not. Um, but as of now, I'm just, gonna just keep doing the mammograms and just pray it doesn't come back and then if it does we'll from there um yep yeah and yeah just gonna try to keep eating healthy and cutting out the sugar and not having alcohol and taking care of myself and you know there are conversations about whether or not I should go on estrogen and based on like mm. some of my test results and we keep talking about that and I know there's a lot yeah. of con- like controversy with HRT and it doesn't actually cause it you know breast cancer and all that stuff so yep we're just going to keep on working closely and, and going with it. Yeah. So, yeah. so those are, so in terms of the nutrition changes you've made, the ones you listed are the main ones in terms of, you said you're, you're reducing your sugar intake, you cut out mm-hmm. alcohol, mm-hmm. Um, the sugar part, what, I mean, has that been like a big shift for you in terms of what you were doing before? Um, it wasn't until I was burned out. Like I didn't, I was never a big sugar eater, but when I went through burnout, all of a sudden I was starting to craving it. Like I would eat a bag of gummy bears every day. Don't tell my mm. husband that he thought the kids were eating them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not kidding. Um, <laughs> but I tell. <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, I, I mean a lot, you know, a big part of it is that, and just also going through like perimenopause, like increasing my protein, um, I used to be someone that ate salads all the time. And then when I got really busy, I stopped because it took a lot of work. And now I've found my love for growing vegetables. Um, actually, we started a garden. And so now like I'm eating so many more salads. And um, I bought myself like all the contraptions to cut them easier. So I could take five yeah. minutes to make them. Those things, the salad choppers are amazing. Do you have one? I need to get one of those. No, oh. I don't. I need to get one. It is. I just, I like, mean, I see, I see like the, like whenever I used to go like out to those salad places in New York city, you know, and you see them do all the nice chopping and the big bowls and all that. And yeah, um, I kind of went through a whole phase where I was like really not into salad. I just didn't like the taste. Mm-hmm. I didn't like it at all. And, um, you know, you probably saw like, I, I have like the only thing that's producing vegetables right now, my lettuce is going insane right now like I literally every day pick some I pick up this huge bag and within two days it's all grown back oh my <laughs> I'm picking That's so amazing. much lettuce it's so much lettuce um yes. and it's delicious it's yep. like all these different varieties mm. and like I just make a really simple dressing and then I'm just like throwing all this, it's like delicious yeah it's it's the store-bought mixed greens and like no shade to that but for some reason for me like the taste it was just like unappealing for some reason and I don't know why I used to be fine with it and now I'm just like it was just like kind of like this sad sad salad (laughs) you know what I no I get it I I actually have been regrowing my romaine lettuce like I buy the romaine from have you done that I buy the romaine from the store I cut off the bottoms I stick them in a little oh yes yeah the living lettuce thing yeah and this week I've been eating my salads from regrowing like so like oh amazing I love that so good it's like little baby romaine lettuces but honestly yeah. like yesterday for dinner you know i took um trader joe's has this amazing they have like the garbanzo beans the chickpeas that are like in spices yes, already the, yeah 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 you know? we have them in like, our like, pantry <laughs> i know it's not in necessarily good oils and that drives me nuts i wish uh, take- it's fine it's fine but i'm Don't trying stress. It, it like i have a moment but like i taught i just tossed that on top of salad like on top of the greens with some sardines and some cherry tomatoes and oh my gosh, it was so good. And yeah, I've been doing for a dressing lately and this came from, I used to have kale in my garden and then mm-hmm. I took it out to replant everything. But like, it was the last of the kale and I was gonna, I was like, oh, maybe I'll like make kale chips. I hadn't done that in a million years. And I remember like, like I put nutritional yeast, I put olive oil, a little salt and like a splash mm-hmm. of apple cider vinegar. And I was like massaging it. And I just like took one to eat and I was like, this is actually really delicious just as is and then so I just ate the kale salad raw because it was so yummy and then I was like actually I really like this dressing and that's 
literally it's like such a weird combo but it's actually what i've been doing for dressing and nutritional yeast is so great and i was like okay so that's kind of what i've just been throwing together um and sometimes i'll like put a little too much vinegar that tastes disgusting so i have to like balance it it has to be like the right balance of things but yeah um it's like really simple and that's kind of what i've been doing um i think for me and it really like the dressing really is everything um Mm -hmm. yeah when it comes to a salad and and just making sure just to support all the activity that i mean i've been less active lately but just making sure i get my carbs in the salad somewhere Mm -hmm. and yeah whether it's like chickpeas and fruits or whatever it is you know um but yeah, awesome. Yeah, um, I want to try that. Yeah, yeah in terms okay. of, so in terms of cortisol, I mean, I did a whole episode on cortisol not long ago, but is there anything else that you're kind of doing for yourself to manage the cortisol? Um, yeah. I think I heard you say something about supplements. I don't know if you want to share anything yeah. about what else you're doing. I don't know where they are. I usually have them somewhere, but yeah, I mean, we started me on this like very, I hate to word the use word intense, but my doctor called it intense. Like it's like eight okay. a day, like a cortisol. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it was okay. like weeks um, where like I wake up and take this one pill for th- like three of them and I take a different one, two of them and then two of them. And then like, and so, and then again later in, and what was so interesting. Okay. So, you know, there's like that, um, the menopause doctor, Dr. Claire, so I don't know whatever her name is. She, she's I don't know. Galveston diet. And she's like been, she just came out with a new book and she's talking like very vocally about, um, you know, cortisol levels and diet and all that stuff, especially as you go into perimenopause and menopause. Okay. She said something about how like she never does, um, saliva tests because, you know, if a custom and, um, if it's a patient comes, comes to her and has specific symptoms, like she's going to put them on this stuff no matter what. And I thought that was really interesting. Hmm. And I said to my doctor, I'm really happy that you gave me saliva test because I am, I get what's going on now. I understand what I'm feeling. Like, I understand that like, if, like when my, I now know what it feels like to have elevated cortisol levels to the point where I can't function. So like hmm. I, there were days where like, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting this feeling like I, I can't, oh, what's going on. And I could go take my pill, like my, my supplement and it would help and like meditate until I felt better. And, you know, I got uh, like a handle on it and we actually just did a saliva test and my cortisol levels are back into, um, normal range, which is really nice after, awesome. after about 12 weeks. Of, what of- supplements are you taking or were you taking? Um, I could go look it up. Let's see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> walk into my bathroom, everyone. And don't mind the laundry back there. And yes, our bathroom has no door in it. I don't know who designed it, <laughs> but it drives me um, well, my bath, my bathroom is like a massive floor to ceiling window that's oh. just clear. That's like what? Who thought that was a good idea? Oh yeah, this is our man. This is our shower. The man who lived here before was a single guy, and we like call it his man cave shower because like, what, like <laughs> bathtub. Like I don't need a steam shower. I need a bathtub. I'm a lady. Anyway, um, <laughs> but so this is one of them. Um, it's by a brand called Design for Health. Yeah, I know Design for Health. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I take this Catecholicom. It's adaptogenic and adrenal tonic herbs. <laughs> and it's got like vitamin C and B vitamins and I can't see what else. I don't know, valerian, lemon balm, ashwagandha, all that fun stuff. Okay, and, so it's like a blend. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the Neurocom I take a few times a day. And that's got more B vitamins, magnesium, chamomile, L-theanine. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, it's like a lot of things that are com- like L theanine. Yeah. There's a lot of things yeah. that are kind of known to come. Okay. Got it. Exactly. They're just calming. And, and, um, I gotta be honest, I'm very cynical in the beginning. I was like, this is not going to work. Like, mm-hmm. like, but I'm going to give it a try. And, and I do think it's helping. Like, I, I mean, anyway, you know, and I, I mean, I'm also like, I'm not eating all the crap and, um, it turns out that hydration is important and dark chocolate is also really good for cortisol. So I eat plenty of dark chocolate. <laughs> um I drink plenty oh drinking tons of water all day like I walk Mm -hmm. around my water bottle now and I don't I don't know once I had kids I hated the taste of water um which is weird okay yeah so I actually drink it flavored all day like I don't buy like I just flavor it with different things like lemon I can drink lemon juice I'll put sometimes apple cider vinegar and like a little bit of some kind of sweetener in there to like make it taste like lemonade or whatever and then I drink all day um like got it um I can't do apple cider vinegar on anything unless it's a dressing. <laughs> so really? like, um, do you ever, so I know most of your runs are not like super long, but do you ever use sports nutrition products or kind of fuel with anything or you tend not yeah. to? 
<laughs> nope. Nope. Um, I mean, I have like protein power in my in my pantry. Like when I've once in a while, I'll make a protein shake. Um, but yeah, no. Even like when I would marathon train or things like that, I would just like grab a handful of dried dates or um, sometimes it was gummy bears. Sometimes it was dried dates. Sometimes you know, I just. And also, like, you know, I would make sort of, like, um, I always call them flavor balls. Um, I don't know. Like, I'd mix, like, dry Energy food. balls. Energy yeah. balls. Yeah. And, like, mm-hmm. I'd make those and carry them along. But um, I don't know. I don't like the taste of, like, the goose and the gel. I just – any of that kind of stuff, I just don't. And then I do have, like, hydration drinks, but I don't do Gatorade okay. or anything like that. So, like, I have some kind – like, some powder that's, you know, just um, electrolytes. Um mm-hmm. And just take those once in a while for like flavor and whatnot. But I just, you know, I take magnesium every night. So I try to keep that normal and I salt my food. So I've got my sodium there. And, you know, like I just, I don't know, I just eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I just, I don't know. I feel like it's really hard. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have, um, I don't have very good. Oh my gosh, what's what I'm looking for? See, brain fog. Um, I'm not really good at following through like on things. Um, so like if I have too many things I have to do, I won't do any of them, you know? So like mm. right now, like I have to take my supplements every day and that's my thing and I drink water. But like, if I had to take anything else, it just would all fall apart. Yeah. So, and you're not running very long right now anyways, right? No, I think the longest I've run now is like eight miles here and there. Okay. Um, and on, and like when I do go for, you know, that's another thing. Like, you know, I used to, I remember when I first started training, and it would be like, you know, you don't need to bring hydration unless you're going for an hour, you know, and, you know, test your body, push your body so that your body gets used to it. And now, like, if I'm going on a three mile run and it's like 75 degrees out, I carry a water bottle. Oh, yeah. But, no, I always tell people to, to carry water for it's hot out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I don't need, I'm good. I don't need to push my body. You know, I might have some electrolytes in there. I have no desire to push my body more than it needs to be pushed. Like, yeah. No, I'm good. So I'd rather feel good. You know? Yeah. So. Um, feeding, this is what I like to ask kind of parents of young kids. I know feeding the family is a tough one um, for many parents. Uh, and I know we kind of touched on that a little bit. Um, what is, yeah, what does that look like in your household? What is, I mean, really, just really hard. <laughs> really hard. I know. I mean, that's kind of been the theme of, oh. of all these. When I, I started recently asking this question, and I fully admit to having struggles with this too. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm always, I'm curious what it looks like in other people's households. Yeah. So it's hard. Um, number one, because I do like, I can be a bit crazy when it comes to nutrition, like because of what I know from the science background, like I know what I'm putting in my kids' bodies and I, I really have a hard time. Like um, when Emmett was younger, he's nine now. And when he was younger, we actually like, he had major behavioral issues out of nowhere every once in a while. And I didn't know what was going on. And then I found out that he couldn't handle, um, red food dye. And every time he would have red food dye, he would have, I mean, he would like melt down. Um, and there's actually like studies that have come out that show like red food dyes, certain food dyes, you know, cause hmm. behavioral issues in kids and that some kids, um, I know I'm talking to nutritionists. You're probably like, oh, I don't know. But, yeah. I was like, interesting. No, I just haven't well, seen it. I just haven't seen yeah, it. It's actually red food dye is not allowed in children's foods in other countries. Mm. Um, just here we approve it. But like, I remember one day he came home and he like punched a hole into the wall and I was like, what the hell? I mean, and my kid is not like that. He's not like, it's, it was crazy. And then mm. I was like, so what's going on? I'm like, what do you have for school today? And what was going on? She's like, he's like, yeah. And then we got red Twizzlers. And I was like, uh, like I just, I started putting things together and then I started doing more research and I spoke to someone about it. Um, he also like, anyway, so the point is like, I try to keep things, you know, healthy in the house. Um, my kids know, like we don't really do food dyes that much, but you know, if they go to a birthday party and there's cake and it's his food diet, go for go for it. Like I'm not going to, yeah, yeah. For a party or special situation, go for it. You know, at home I keep, you know, colored sprinkles that don't have dyes and things like that. But like on a basic meal, it's really hard. My daughter and like my son is nine, my daughter is six. Orly won't eat pizza and it will only eat pizza. Like Orly would rather <laughs> salad than pizza. And it wants to eat the entire pizza himself. So like if we have pizza night, I'm still making a salad for Orly. You know, like mama never gets a break. Um you know, uh, I hear you. Yeah. And it will eat apples, but right now it's not apple season and apples don't taste very good. So that's about the only, they don't taste good to the kids or, or are you just not buying them? Oh no, we buy them. They don't taste good. It's like, yeah, they just, 
Yeah, we keep, yeah. We keep buying them, but they're just yeah, 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 yeah they're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So he's, he's finally tasted a strawberry, and some days he's willing to eat it, and some days he's not. Last night yeah. he didn't want to eat the tortellini, but like he had one piece of lettuce, two pieces of bell pepper, and I think that's it. You know, um, because he didn't want to touch the tortellini because he didn't like he didn't like that for some reason. Um, it's it's hard, but. You know, we've gotten to the point where I don't make separate meals anymore and where I just make sure. That's to huge. Up. Yep. <laughs> I'm still there. <laughs> people that I know still eat, you know, yeah. like Friday night we make challah every Friday night and mm-hmm. I've learned to make chicken soup with challah. He will not eat chunks of chicken soup, but if I puree it, not the chicken, I don't puree the chicken, sure. but if I yeah. puree the vegetables, he loves it and he'll dip his challah in vegetables and like in, in the pureed chicken vegetable soup. So like, that's what we do almost every Friday night, you know, um, you just find the things that work. You find the things basically. that work, and they don't. And, and you know, and that's another thing, like about online and social media and Pinterest. Like, if everyone, like, it makes it seem like we have to make things so complicated for the meals, and the meals have to have twenty mm. ingredients and have a recipe. They don't like at all. Cook a piece of chicken or a piece of fish, or yeah, you know, Costco has the most amazing salmon burgers. Do you know these? They come in the frozen no. Bin. I'll send you a picture of them. They come in the frozen okay. bin. They are so good. Um, and there's like, they come in like a sleeve and my kids will eat those. Um, mm. they will only eat them if they have a hamburger bun with them, even though they won't eat the bun with the burger. They have to have it separate. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, they're so funny. <laughs> but like, I always make sure to have like, you know, either I make, I make hamburger buns from scratch cause I love baking breads or like, okay. I brioche, or I get like these brioche hamburger buns from Aldi's mm-hmm. and they mm-hmm. have, and like, you know, that's it. Or I don't know. There's just... You know, as long as there's one thing on the table they'll eat, I'm fine. Yes. And if any of it, then they'll go to bed hungry. And I, I mean, kids won't. Kids will eat if they're hungry. Kids will eat if they're yeah. hungry. No, it's hard. Yeah, no. My my younger one has like major emotional regulation <laughs> issues, just constantly, and she's my one that also won't eat anything. And we're doing occupational therapy, and we're exploring yeah. the whole thing because there's it's like a very layered thing that's going on. But um. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's hard. Just I think also, especially when you are, when you do know a lot about nutrition, whether you're, you know you're a nutrition professional or not, it makes it even harder sometimes to like figure it out yourself. For me, it's funny. It's like it's it's so much easier for me to figure it out for other people than it is for myself sometimes. And, and I guess that's not really a surprising thing, right? Um, you judge yourself. But, you feel like it's yeah, in yeah. But yeah, but and I think it's, it's yeah. No, of course, and. Um, we've been a little bit better. I think really planning is such a key thing. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always asking people to like, where do you draw kind of inspiration for meals? I mean, I think as you were saying, it can be super simple and that's kind of how we eat in our house and we tend to be really simple, but I kind of reached this tipping point where I was like, I'm so bored. I usually I'm totally fine with simple. And then I reached this point where I'm like, I don't want to eat this food anymore. I need something more exciting. Yeah. And I think, and now I'm back, I think I'm over it now, but, um, but it was just kind of, my husband's just looking at me like, what, like, what do you, what do you want to do? Um, okay. but yeah, I don't know. I don't know where, you, if you get, do you use, um, any inspiration from like recipes online or pictures, or you mentioned Pinterest, do you kind of look anywhere for things or you just kind of come up with whatever? Um, right now I use inspiration from whatever is in my pantry that I have time to make. So there you go. <laughs> some days it's going to be like, we do, um, my son, my son loves tacos. Yeah. Um, so when we go to Costco, I'll buy like a, a whole bunch of like the, you know, the grass fed meat. And then I know that mushrooms are really good for you, but my kids won't eat them. So I'll chop mm-hmm. mushrooms finally, put it in with the meat and the taco mix. And that, you know, will last like that. They'll have taco night. So we do taco night at least once a week. Um, I do this recipe where it's so easy. I just take chicken thighs and cook them. And then I um, puree cottage cheese and um Buffalo sauce, Primal Kitchen buffalo sauce. Oh, good. Mix them together, pour on top of the chicken, bake it with like a little cheddar cheese on top. So like it's a buffalo chicken dip. And the kids are allowed to eat it with tortilla chips if they want. And I make guacamole with lettuce. Like I just, things that I never thought I was going to make, like I just keep it so, you know, some nights it's just, I take a piece of barramundi from the freezer, stick it in the, in my oven has like, um, uh, what is it? The air fryer mode. Just mm-hmm. air fryer mode for like 10 minutes and serve it next to like mashed sweet potatoes. Call it a day. You know, yeah. you have 20 different things. Like sometimes it's a protein and a vegetable. And yeah. honestly, like if we're going to have burgers and I know they're not going to eat anything besides the burger and the bun, like sometimes it's just burgers on a bun. Yeah. Like 
and I do, I do try to include a salad. So like, I, I mean, I always eat the salad. So, you know, last night Emmett was willing to eat two pieces of romaine lettuce, like, and you know, a little pepper. pepper. So like they have to have some kind of a vegetable with it. Um, just, it doesn't have to be so hard. It's like it, you know, burgers and peas. Yeah. Like, um, I, so sometimes it's just, I take like a, I'll take a bunch of vegetables, roast them, put them in a food processor and make them into tomato sauce. And by the way, I know this sounds complicated. It literally takes, like, I'm not, if it takes more than five minutes, I'm not doing it. I yeah. do not have time. Like, no, I food processor is great yeah. no, for sauces and stuff. Yeah. I made a really good pesto with, um, fresh basil leaves, spiced spinach that I was just trying to use up. I had yeah. Parmesan and some mm. almonds and I think um, lemon juice, olive oil, salt, and just you know, blend it all up and then boom, you have homemade pesto sauce. Exactly. It doesn't have to <laughs> yeah. be hard. You know, it's, it doesn't, it really doesn't like some, or oh, Trader Joe's has amazing, um, they have their kale pesto. I'm yes, like, I like that one. So good. It's so like, I'll put that on, you know, some pasta for my kids with like, I'll yeah. get gnocchi or just pasta and then I'll put a protein next to it. I'm like, you guys need to have a piece of the protein too. Like here's a piece of chicken next, you know. Yeah. And that's it. Like it doesn't, they're going to survive. Yeah. Yep. We're gonna survive. Absolutely. Sometimes it's almost like we know too much, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, not good to know so much. Like, yeah. 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 You know, yeah. I, th I think my, my big, like kind of circling back to what I was saying before is, is just recognizing that this is the best that I can do right now. Mm -hmm. And, and this is, I mean, because this is what I tell the people I work with too. Like no one expects perfection that doesn't exist. And yes, we have ideals. Um, but, you know, the best that we can do on any given day, that's the best you can do. And, and that's fine. And we kind of move on. Right. But Claire, listen, listen to yourself. You're like, well, it's just the best I can do. You're talking about making homemade, homemade pesto for your. Oh, no, I do not do that on the regular. Okay. But even like, even with yes. like, you warmed up chicken nuggets, whatever it is, like there yeah. are families, like there are kids that don't even get that. There are families. Exactly. That's, that was my point. Yeah. Like, that was my point. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think it's, it's, I think it's the reaction. Like, I think I was reacting to, you know, again, other people being like, oh, chicken nuggets. And it's like, sorry, that's what I feed my child. Is I, I'm a dietitian. I don't care. You know what? Chicken nuggets have a bad rap. Okay. Growing up, I mean, I didn't do McDonald's. So that like skis me out. But growing up, like chicken nuggets were all this processed meats. And then later on, like, you know, there were all these people that found out that, oh, that's not great for you. And now you can go to Costco and get a bag of chicken nuggets where it's whole breast meat in pretty decent breading. If you look at the ingredients, it actually isn't that many more ingredients than what you would make in your own home if you made them from scratch. No, I'm, I'm my really kid, my kid eats dino nuggets. It's the only kind I, she'll eat. It's literally the only, it has to be the dino nuggets. Four. Oh, okay. That was my son when he was four. Yeah. It yeah. has to be the dino nuggets. I tried buying the alphabet ones. I tried buying just Trader Joe's version. Nope. <laughs> ones are not good. No, the dino nuggets. They aren't. They aren't. Okay. Like, and guess what? When my kids were that age, they ate dino nuggets too. That's how I got Emmett to start eating chicken. Yeah. Dino and then they're yeah. going to, then they'll get to the next stage, next stage. Like, oh yeah. You know I'm, I'm not overly worried about it. I mean, the only thing that sucks is traveling. We're going traveling next week. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, we're going, and it's like you go out to a restaurant and their chicken nuggets are like, they're delicious. They're like actual pieces of chicken tenders with like the most delicious breading. And it's like, I want to eat them. Won't touch it. You know, the, and my child won't eat pizza, pizza, pasta, yeah. <laughs> nothing. So it, it's going to be adventure. Right. When they get craft macaroni and cheese at a, at a restaurant and it's like, they charge me $5 for a box of like 50 cent pasta. And then he tells me that it's better than my pasta from home. Love that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's some... <laughs> this is why this is why we mostly stay in a condo where we can just make stuff and you know uh, trust Anywho. me yeah I get it. you get it you get I... it <laughs> vacation <laughs> um what's anywho uh what's on the horizon for you what's you know any kind of big projects or things you want to shout out or events races i don't know i mean it sounds like you're not really training for anything no i'm just uh just trying to build up mileage again if I feel like it. And um, I'm going to just, I'm, you know, just getting ready for the fall. Um, and I, like, honestly, my kids are home this summer. So I'm just, this is the first summer they've been home. They usually go to camp. 
And I'm sort of wanting to be that mom who like doesn't have to work every day. And I want to take them hiking. And you know, we joined the Whitewater Center and we joined Heroines. I want to take them to water parks and I want to take them to a waterfall. And so, Amazing. Um, You're North Carolina, you said? Yeah, we're North Carolina. Awesome. I want it to be the summer of living, if that makes any sense. Um, and then come fall, you know, it goes back to craziness, race jewelry and races and um, my husband is training for um, a trail marathon in Alaska right now. So oh, cool. Bring him on that in terms of like, you know, weekend time. He gets to run more than I do. And that's totally fine with me. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just like cruising on by. I remember when I worked in the corporate world and um, we would have our yearly reviews and it, you know, it'd be this intense intense uh process and then you know you go through it all and then at the end they'd be like okay well here's what we wanted you to work on for next year and like it never was it was like never enough you know like you never chill and i don't want to what's next i just i just want to chill i just want to yeah eat pretzels summer (laughs) is is summer normally kind of a quieter time for you with your business no um no no once upon a time it used to be, but honestly, like you know, July is not huge for, in terms of, um, online sales, but I do a bunch of projects. Like I do all the Duluth, um, is a running company, um, in Duluth and they have a women's only race. That's a 10 miler. And I do all the finish line medals, um, like oh, so cool. 500 necklaces to make for them right now. And then mm-hmm. going into you know, New York city marathon season right now, I'm in the process of getting all the new designs. Um, finalized and then we have to photograph them and all that and do the marketing behind that so there's really I don't ever get downtime um Mm -hmm. I'd like downtime one day maybe be great but um yeah so we just keep going and it's just you right you don't have anyone working for you well so my help you is um 100% with me now so he does a lot um of like website development stuff and right now he's like searching the whole website and finding every single mistake on there that I've made which <laughs> plentiful yeah I feel like he's my boss now it's really fun that's um, hilarious yeah like we have meetings set up for all of next week um just like going through the assortment and so I work with him and um I do have someone now coming two times a week to help me with like um, inventory and packing orders and things like that. And Got it. Okay. Bring someone on to start working on social media stuff. Um, not like the, but you make everything yourself. Mm-hmm. You're actually making everything. Okay. Yeah. I see my, can you see my hands? I don't know. Oh yeah. That's the hand. <laughs> this is after I clean them. My nails are really beautiful today, but, um, yeah, I'm actually also right now looking into investing in some new machinery so that I don't physically have to destroy my hands every day and polish each piece individually. So yeah. But yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. As as I mean, I was having this discussion. I mean, I say discussion. It's more like me like having a meltdown yesterday. <laughs> I was just like, Ugh. like, how do you like, how do you, especially in the summer, um, with young kids, where you're like, want to be there for them, and as you said, you want to like be the mom that takes them to things and whatever. Like we were offline talking about camp and the crazy hours and all this stuff. It's like I want to be able to just pick them up at. 3 p.m. and do all this crazy stuff and chaperone this and that and not stress about the lost time to work and and all these things and it it does feel never ending when you have your own business and um parts of me it's just like I maybe I just need to like slow down and let it go and just say you know what I don't have to always be moving at a mile a minute um and maybe my business doesn't need to grow all the time and I can just sit it's really true and... you need boundaries you, yeah. need boundaries you need like the fact is like these are work hours and my work hours stop at this point and my kids need me and I'm not going to check my emails I'm not going to think about work but yep. I'm like your kids need to see that you're working also so sometimes if you need a day like part during the day where you, you're with your kids but you need to work hey guys mommy's working right now and you guys need to do this and like that just needs to it's really hard but it's good for it's them hard. too to, to oh see yeah that. Are, you know 100 percent. and i and i have child care i mean they're in school they all this stuff yeah. um but you know just kind of relating to what you were saying and it's a good reminder that finding that balance is really really hard you know yeah. you know there, there are a lot of moving parts in, in life <laughs> and we're all just trying I, i've given up on the idea of balance right. it doesn't exist balance. but they're yeah yeah, yeah. Balance, balance is bullshit 100 percent, and it's just kind of 
figuring out the things that you need to feel good and to take care of yourself and your loved ones. And, exactly. you know, whether it's certain things you're putting in your body or the way that you're moving and other ways that you're caring for yourself and people, it's just figuring that out can be really challenging. But, you know, I think we're all kind of in that, you know, in that journey and it's a work in progress for sure. Definitely is for me. Yep. Never end. <laughs> Something no. like that. Yeah. Sure. Anywho. Um, and then, yeah, just last, you know, lastly, I mean, I already kind of called out your conversation with Jonathan, but I really enjoyed it. And just, you know, first of all, it's been really, this is a little bit of a different style interview that I, I normally do. It's, it's, I mean, a little bit similar, but we had a lot of tangents. It's very, it's really just like kind of a conversational getting to know you, which was really nice. Maybe our listeners are like, what the hell are you guys doing? But it's fine. I enjoyed it. And it's my podcast. So whatever. Um, <laughs> But, um, but, you know, I really, I really did enjoy just hearing your, you know, your thoughts and your story about, you know, being Jewish in today's world. And that was such like an open and vulnerable conversation. And just thanks for putting it out there. And um, I do encourage anyone who hasn't listened to give it a listen because it was great. And it seems like you guys got some really good feedback too, which was nice. Yeah, I was, I mean, I wasn't nervous until my husband was like, um, what the hell is wrong with you? And I was like, what? Like, well, he didn't say it like that. I, I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, he's like, I'm really worried that like we're gonna get like attacked. He's like, you, yeah, back. And I was like, I don't, I don't hold back when it comes to this. Like, I, I don't feel like why should we hold back? Like, <laughs> why do I have yeah. to hold back? Like, you know what's happening to us as a people right now? The anti-Semitism. Yeah. Like, no one would stand for for this happening to anyone else. So why is it okay for it to happen to us? And no, I'm not gonna. Yeah. That. So the fact that we got some really, really positive feedback um, made me feel a little better. Good. So, I'm really glad. Thank I'm you. For, glad. Thank you for saying yeah. that. And no, you know. I appreciate it. I appreciate both of you guys and um, speaking up on your platforms and all that. So thank you. Um, all right. Yeah. We're going to wrap this up with some yeah. quick bites questions. What yeah. is your favorite post run meal or snack? Favorite post run meal is um, an omelet with American cheese. And mushrooms has to be well done and the cheese has to be like oozing out, but the eggs can't be runny. Um, hash browns, whole wheat toast, and, and salted butter with a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. Is this something you make or are you going out to get? Um, if like, if it's a race, I go out to get. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. It's just oh, the salt and the, and then tons of ketchup all over the hash browns. It's just so good. So. <laughs> it's kind of similar to the breakfast I enjoyed. It's a little bit different this morning, but similar, similar. Um, biggest cooking catastrophe if you've ever had one. Oh gosh. Um, my knees days, I have them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I tend to forget my food on the, you know, and then it just burns. Um, so yeah, they just, it, it's something I do often. Could be left, it. left the, the gas on in the house. Oh no. Morning. Robert was at home. He was traveling. I woke up in the morning and I was like, what's that noise and that smell? And I was like, oh my gosh, there's gas leaking from our stove the whole night and I like oh my God. opened all the windows got the kids out of the house for the day that was, that was so fun I've done that before but for a very short period of time yeah no. I've definitely done that before my husband all freaked night. out yeah. alright well you know what you you guys are okay you survived <laughs> house didn't blow up oh dear I was like um, oh, all day it was really fun yeah yeah how do you like your eggs cooked I guess it's an omelet is that well, kind of the way you go yeah well done it. Has to be all okay. Done. What yeah. is your favorite beverage? Um, beer. No kidding. <laughs> That's totally cool. <laughs> but like, good beer, like it, like not like Coors Light. Sorry, Robert. Yeah. Like, like a good. There's this. Um, there's this. I don't know what brand it is, but Robert gets this beer that is like coffee flavored. And mm. gosh, it's so good. Um, or water, nice. but flavored water, like lemonade water kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what is your comfort food? Our comfort foods. Uh, sushi. I love sushi. I could eat it all day, every day. And if I'm not eating egg omelets, beer. <laughs> Just over here, I haven't drinking beer, sushi, and omelets. There we go. Um, uh, if, like all yeah. Food. Hard to pick. Yeah. Yeah. What is your favorite ice cream flavor if you eat ice cream? Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Butter pecan. Like, the, like, really rich, good. It used to be Briars, but now they're not as good. But, um. Mm. We went to Amish country and I got like fresh butter pecan ice cream Ooh, that yum. I've ever had. I still remember it. 
Oh, so good. <laughs> and top three items of gear that are most essential to your active lifestyle. Um, non-chafing shorts. <laughs> yes. Sports bra that has a back pocket so I can just slip my phone in and I don't have to carry anything. Mm-hmm. And really good running shoes. Um, so, yeah, keep it simple, you know? Basic. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Erica, for coming on <laughs> and spending some time with me. I feel like we had like a really cool chat. I feel like yeah. we could be buddies. <laughs> I'm like, I can relate to everything you're saying. Um, and yeah, really happy we got to spend some time together. And where can everyone find you online if they want to give you a follow and buy some of your beautiful jewelry, get sure. in touch, all that? Uh, so Erica Sarah, E R I C A S A R A dot com, or that's my Instagram handle also. I don't do TikTok. I don't do that, yeah. whatever. I don't do Twitter. I don't either. Um, yeah, there. So awesome. Well, Thanks. I hope you continue to feel amazing and enjoy your running and good luck with the summer madness and all the jewelry making and have a great time with uh the living your summer, whatever you're calling it. Summer of living. Summer of living. There you go. Yes, summer of living. I hope you have a great summer of living. <laughs> thank you (laughs) you later have a have a good one that's our show for today i hope you all enjoyed that one and if you did please make sure you hit follow or subscribe wherever you listen and if you have a minute i would be so grateful if you could also rate and review my show if you're able to support my show financially, I do have a Patreon page and I'd love to see you over there. Patreon members get some great perks, including free merchandise, some huge discounts on my digital downloads and much more. Thank you so much for your support. Please feel free to email me claire at eatforendurance.com with any feedback, questions or topic requests. And again, if you're interested potentially in that hybrid uh, course offering, let me know ASAP um, so I can determine if I have enough interest to make it happen. All right. Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time.